So I know this might be a bit of a controversial take, but I really believe the 2021 Brooklyn Nets is one of the best teams in NBA history to never win a championship. Just from a talent standpoint, you got Kevin Durant, you got James Harden and Kyrie Irving all on the same team is just insane. It's crazy. I kind of agree with you. They're a great collection of talent. They just never got a chance to get going. And honestly, in the end, they're probably the biggest failure in NBA history. Before we start talking about the big three Brooklyn Nets, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on any new videos. So this story really starts in 2019. That was the breakout year for the Nets. Everyone remembers that team. They were so much fun. They had great chemistry. They went from 28 wins to 42. This is good enough for six in the East. I just remember those videos of them dancing on the bench, just having the time of their lives. This team, like I said, it was just so much fun. I still see those videos on Twitter to this day. <laughs> they were led by D'Angelo Russell. It was an all-star this year, just out of nowhere. It was crazy, honestly, seeing where the Nets had been for the previous couple years, because obviously they jettisoned all their picks away to trade for Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett. And it just felt like, how are the Nets ever going to rebuild? And you know what? It's making some good trades and some good draft picks with the picks they had remaining. They built a really solid team. Then the 2019 offseason happened where you had Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving in one offseason. I was pushing hard. I'm like, Katie and Kyrie are going to the Knicks. The Knicks are back. And then, of course, they go to the Nets. Yeah, that was <laughs> hilarious. I remember it vividly. Constantly, like, week in, week out. All the Knicks are getting KD and Kyrie, guys. Like, wait and see. And then it didn't happen. Also funny, they added DeAndre Jordan really just because Kyrie and KD wanted him there. Like, he was fine at this point. He wasn't completely washed, but it really wasn't that big of an addition. It was mainly just KD and Kyrie. It's not about what you know. It's about who you know. <laughs> The next year, they regressed a little bit. They won 35 games. Kyrie actually had a great statistical season, but he only ended up playing 20 games. And he had some interesting statements to the media. In January, he flat out said the team needed one or two more pieces. Always great when your star says that. <laughs> right. He said, collectively, I feel like we have great pieces, but it's pretty glaring. We need one or two more pieces that'll complement myself, Kevin Durant, DJ, JT, Spencer, Karis. And we'll see how that evolves. You need one or two more pieces to that? <laughs> yeah. The funny thing is he mentions Garrett Temple in there, but not Jared Allen. Great job, Kyrie. I don't know why they hated Jared Allen, but whatever. He's a great big. Still is a great big. Kenny Atkinson would get fired in March. The team was 28 34 at the time, but some people were kind of shocked. I mean, he didn't really have a chance to coach the team fully healthy. He'd been there for four years. Jacques Vaughn did step in and go 7 and 3, but it was a bit of a shocking fire, and a lot of people thought maybe Kyrie and Katie had a bit to do with it. You mean maybe? <laughs> Definitely they Absolutely did. had something to do with it. I was shocked by this, considering that Kenny Atkinson helped drag them out of the doldrums that they were in for those years after they jettisoned all their picks away. Like, to me, this is as unfair a firing as you can possibly see in the NBA. Even with that happening, the team still managed to make the playoffs in the bubble. They would get absolutely worked by the Raptors and get swept, but for the most part, at least my perspective was, who really cared? We need to see this team with KD and Kyrie together next season. 2020 offseason, though, got off to a very bizarre start because the Nets hired Steve Nash as their head coach. Now look, I know Katie and Nash had a relationship from their time in Golden State. And Nash on the floor, one of the smartest basketball players in NBA history, had all the tools to be a great coach. That being said, a humongous risk to hire a coach with no head coaching experience. I know he was an assistant coach for Golden State and I know everyone was like, oh, everything Golden State touches turns to, for lack of a better word, gold, but massive risk. The team basically stayed the same. They added Landry Shamit. They had a Bruce Brown. They had a Jeff Green. But besides that, it was based on the same roster. This time, they'd just be fully healthy. Yeah, I mean, they start out the season hot. They drub the Warriors by 26 on opening night. Kyrie had 26, KD had 22. Next night, they beat the Celtics by 28. Kyrie dropped 37 and KD had 29. Next game, though, after that, only the third game of the year, disaster struck because Spencer did when he tore his ACL. On January 7th, Kyrie would miss a game against the 76ers due to personal reasons, and no one was really sure why, but apparently he'd been in contact with Steve Nash. He had KD's support, so whatever, Kyrie's doing his own thing. He was then spotted 
spotted massless at his sister's birthday party, which violated health and safety protocols. So you got Dewey out with an ACL tear. You got Kyrie missing games just because. I think it was the January 6th riot was like the reason why I think he like needed some time away from the team to process it. So you got him missing games for that. And while he's missing those games, he's violating health and safety protocols at his sister's birthday party. Just a non-problematic cocktail right there. Yeah. So what do you do? You go out and you get James Harden. When this trade went down, I was shocked at least. I know there was the rumors like, oh, maybe the Nets are going to go in for Harden, but I just did not think it was going to happen. I didn't think it was possible the NBA could top the big three in Miami. Like the original version before Wade's knees went when it was LeBron, top five player in the world. Wade, top five player in the world. Bosh, top 10 player in the world. I think this topped it. All three of these guys in their primes, like best big three in NBA history, I think. Yeah, I'd agree. And the Nets had to send out a haul to get Harden. They sent out Torian Prince. They sent out Jared Allen, who'd become an all-star. They sent out Karis LeVert. They sent out three first-round picks and three first-round pick swaps. So they were sending out everything to get Harden. But at the time, you know, Harden was one of the best players in the league. Yeah, that trade won't come back to bite them in any way. No. After missing seven straight games, Kyrie would return to the team in a game against the Cavs. So they finally had Kyrie, Harden, Katie together, ready to dominate. They would lose this game. <laughs> but everyone thought, you know, once they gelled together, things would be completely completely fine. Yeah, the problem is they just, they didn't play together. They only played over their entire period as teammates, 16 games together. Now they did go 13 and three, but it was just like whenever all three of them were getting ready to get on the court together, one of them would go down with an injury. Yeah, this season, Harden only played 36 games for the Nets. He was traded there at the beginning of the season. Durant only played 35 games for the Nets. Kyrie did play 54, and I know it was a shortened season, but still, you got guys just missing a ton of time. So how do you solve that? You pick up LaMarcus Aldridge and Blake Griffin. <laughs> In hindsight, though, just two washed bigs. But at the time, it was like, damn, they got two more former All-Stars. Yeah. First round, they'd play against the Celtics, and they just beat the shit out of them. The series went five, but KD, Harden, and Kyrie just looked unstoppable together. This was highlighting a Game 4 win where they won 141-126. The big three combined for over 100 points together. And what's memorable about this game, at the end of the game, Kyrie stomped on Lucky, the Celtics logo, which I don't care. That is hilarious. Hilarious. I knew it. I was like, you probably had the biggest smile I on did. your face. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I mean, just talking about the game, you give up 126, that's not great. But when you score 141, I mean, good Lord, uh, you can't do anything about it. You just got outscored by a better team it is what it is. Second round, they'd play the Bucks, and literally less than one minute into the series, Harden would get injured, he'd injure his hamstring. And you could basically say James Harden has never been the same player since. It's the worst hamstring injury in sports history. <laughs> It is. I don't think it's debatable. He does not look even remotely close to what he was with the Nets or the Rockets before that. Still won the game, 115-107. Game two, they also win the game. They just blew out the Bucks, 125-86. And it felt like, you know, Harden's out, he can rest. But as long as you got KD and Kyrie together, you can still beat the Bucks. I mean, you lose your second best player and you drub the Milwaukee Bucks <laughs> by 39 points. Yeah, the future champions. Nets lost a close one in game three. And again, another one of their big three went down. Kyrie sprained his ankle. Bucks also won game four. They would even the series 2-2. James Harden came back in game five and saying he was a shell of himself is insulting to shells. He was like at best 10 to 15% of what he normally yeah. is. Dude had no business playing basketball. I don't know why he came back. Apparently the Nets medical staff up big time and messed up on grading the hamstring strain, but he should not have been on the court. Should have been in a cast yes. in a hospital bed. <laughs> the person who definitely was themselves, though, was Kevin Durant, because I don't know if there's been a stretch, like a three-game stretch I've ever seen where a player played better. In game five, KD, all he did was a 49-point triple-double. I mean, 49 points, 17 boards, and 10 assists. How did Kevin Durant get 17 boards? I have no idea. I mean, who else is getting boards? Blake Griffin? DeAndre? <laughs> game six, they'd lose by 15. KD had a solid game. He put up 30, but it wasn't enough. And then game seven, one of the best playoff games of the decade easily. It went to overtime. And if it wasn't for KD's big ass feet, <laughs> 
Maybe this all changes and we don't even make a video on them because they win the title. But that is just brutal looking back at it. I know they call football the game of inches, but this was the game of inches quite literally. If Katie does, I don't know what size shoe he wears. If he wore like a size and a half smaller, maybe all three of them are still in Brooklyn. The game went to overtime. Katie was just too gassed at that point. He had a shot to tie the game at the end, completely just airballed it. I was so convinced he was making it. I thought he'd make it too, but the dude was just clearly gassed. They'd lose the series in a brutal loss. But I mean, my sentiment was you bring everyone back fully healthy. They're still the best team in the NBA, fully healthy. One big problem though, New York City would pass a law mandating all professional athletes playing home games to be vaccinated. The issue here was Kyrie Irving was not vaccinated. KD, I guess, was okay with this. He kind of supported Kyrie's decision. This pissed James Harden off. Wouldn't it? This would piss me <laughs> off. Harden had every right to be pissed at this. So Kyrie, he was eligible to play away games, but they decided just not to have him with the team until he could play full time. Even then though, KD and Harden had them at the top of the east going into the new year yeah right around the start of the new year they were at the top of the eastern conference but they lost three games in a row to philadelphia the clippers and to memphis and then on january 5th on the road at indiana they decided this is the time we're gonna bring back Kyrie, and we're gonna have him play only road games i think they lost those three games in a row and panicked i think they did but seeing them back together they still balled the hell out they won that game even if it was just two and a half of them that's still two and a half super stars that's good enough to compete yeah i mean it was all right for the next couple of weeks they were you know kind of up and down they won some games they lost some games they were still 13 games over 500 and then kd sprained his mcl and this was really the end of the big three in brooklyn because they went on one of the most baffling streaks in nba history they lost 11 straight games well remember harden just basically gave up he's like uh, this is not what i signed up for he was shooting those tour dates now they look like concert tour dates <laughs> i just was looking at him four for 15 <laughs> Four for 10, four for 13, <laughs> three for 12, he on tour. In February, the big three air would officially end. They'd trade Harden to the Nets for a package revolved around Ben Simmons. What's funny about this, all these guys missing time, Ben Simmons had not played a game the entire season and would not play a game for the entire season, even in the play. You know, as bad as Harden is now, this was still a god-awful trade yeah, for Brooklyn. Yeah, it really was. It was a horrible trade. Maybe if Ben Simmons is back this year, I know he played okay in like his first preseason game. Maybe if he's back, it'll change. But as of right now, horrible trade. KD would come back. They'd finish the seventh seed, but then they got swept and absolutely worked by the Celtics. And we basically all know what happened after. Last summer, both Kyrie and KD demanded trades. They held on to him for a while, and then they were sent to both Phoenix and Dallas. Dallas, and the air in Brooklyn was over. Well, they gave you one last little bit of hope last season, didn't they? Because they both requested those trades in the offseason. They were both denied. They brought them both back to the team, and they were pretty good for a while. I think they had a 12-game winning streak at one point, and the Nets were like, nah, we're not giving Kyrie a contract. Then he demanded a trade, and that's where it blew up. They had to just, you know, tease you one more time with the potential. Yeah, so much potential that just never got fulfilled and completely wasted. Most great teams that never won a title at least made the conference finals. Most of them made the finals. This team couldn't even get out of the second round. They're a complete what if. So what do you guys think? Is this Brooklyn Nets team one of the best teams that ever won a title? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving a like. And hey, while you're here, check out some of our other content as well. And don't forget to subscribe to Synthetic Sports.